Hello and welcome to episode two of our Aston Martin Valkyrie series. This is also part of my Michelin missions story. Now today we're working obviously in collaboration with Aston Martin, but importantly, Red Bull. And today we are down at the Red Bull facility to give you a very significant look at a major step in the development of this car. Today, we're virtually getting the first drive of the Aston Martin Valkyrie. down all right uh, so you'll put the cans on in a moment so okay basically then so you left foot braking mm -hmm. yeah. now uh, actually one of the sort of less uh, sexy things we're doing here is for instance things like working on the mechanism and the control strategy for pull away sure so so yeah. actually we've had to be using the clutch to actually just get the thing moving up until recently now it pulls away so you just make sure you're in a gear in first gear okay go on the gas and okay. it will pull away so, but no. um you probably will get an anti-stall message come up here as you yes. pull away you yeah. just get rolling okay um so what you do is you then just dip the clutch okay. and drop it again okay. and that will clear that so it's just a glitch we've got at the minute okay. that's, all, but that's a new a new functionality we've got right. this first model um doesn't have abs Okay. doesn't have traction control okay. okay so just be a bit steady with the braking sure. straight line braking get a feel okay. for it um, and then also particularly when you're getting on the power out of the slower corners just mm -hmm. like the bus stop and the source just be a bit careful just to feed it in when you're particularly as you're straightening sure. in the simulator it's quite difficult to gauge your entry speed sure. so typically yeah. go in slow go go in slow yes. and then with that each lap you'll start uh, to build up a data bank of uh, brake here or some type of brake a bit later and carry a bit more speed in but yeah. typical thing when you drive for the first time is you try and go in too quick into the corners yeah and okay. therefore then you will discover it's, a, it's an understeer sort of limited okay. uh, car um, drive to the grip you've got at the front do a few laps of spa let's have a chat when you get out I can we can talk to you on the radio. Yep. Um, if you want to talk back, you can press that one. The light comes on. That means you're talking to us. Okay. You have to press it again to close the mic, and then sure. we can talk back. Okay. So, very conveniently, find myself at Spa, despite the fact that we are ultimately in Milton Keynes. And what's fantastic about this opportunity is uh, we get to control the weather. So for, for once, it's not raining on my videos. Anyway, the car we're in now, if you could call it a car, despite the fact that it looks like I'm in an F1 car, is, uh, is Aston and Red Bull's benchmark car, which is uh, sort of made up of data, which would simulate your generic supercar sports car. So think of it as a, a combination of all sorts of uh, supercars and sports cars that have current and gone by which have set lap times and benchmarks around both Spa and the Nürburgring and the like. Now the idea of this particular session of the car I'm in now um, is for A for me to get my eye in around Spa in the simulator uh, but also for me to have a feel of what your averagely fast what is considered a fast supercar around this racetrack feels like on this sim also gives me an opportunity to tell you guys that the, this simulator is not easy. Um, it's exceptionally hard to judge at first because the sound that we've got coming into my ears actually is their demo sound to replicate uh, the revs of what Valkyrie might sound like. But the performance that I've got underfoot and the braking performance and the levels of downforce ultimately on nowhere near that. So right now I'm having to basically use this as a sighting lab, feel what it's like to be in a normal supercar and sports car. And then in a minute, whoop, in a minute, yeah, you definitely couldn't drift an F1 car like that. <laughs> in a minute, we're gonna jump into the Valkyrie and just compare notes as a back-to-back -back experience as to what it's like jumping into something which is so far we've been told a completely different ball game and that's ultimately what this session is all about this video is to see if the claims that these guys are making add up to the experience on this sim now don't forget we are 
in Red Bull Racing's simulator, which is one of the most advanced simulators in the world. So if there was anything to demonstrate proof of concept, we are sat in it. It's just unbelievable. Very strange feeling being in a car which is an open wheel single seater and not having the amount of downforce which is associated with it. <laughs> so what you haven't seen is that I've actually just spent quite a few laps going around here, learning it, learning braking points in a, a by convention fast supercar, road car. So I'm showing you around one lap to show you what it's all about. And then right now, I'm gonna stop here and the Red Bull team are going to magically put me in a development stage of a Valkyrie. <laughs> okay, so first things first, um, not only is the simulator incredible, but it's really hard. It's really hard to adapt to. Um, but I've done plenty of laps in their base car, their benchmark car, and now we're gonna see how all of this amazing tech and downforce that we've heard about on paper translates into, well, I guess as close as real world experience as we can experience up until now. I want you to oh, um, get a subjective feel for obviously straight line speed, braking points, cornering performance, uh -huh. what the drivability is like within all of that. Yeah. Um, you're going to find you're going to arrive at corners a bit quicker, yeah. but. Oddly, the braking distance is going to be pretty short because the <coughs> car's got a lot of downforce and grip. And then look at your how the car is and how responsive it is in the corners. Okay. What we've tried to do is have a high-performance car that does what you ask it to do. Okay. Okay. It still doesn't have ABS or traction control okay. just because this is the model we've got. We, sure. We'll bolt all of that stuff on as we develop it yeah. later. Um, You've got six gears with this car, okay. so you might find yourself going up through a rouge and up here, and there's the straight thing, and maybe I'll go to the seventh. Okay. But six, six is what you've got. Okay. okay, so we're about to jump into Valkyrie effectively. Uh, what I will stress is that the simulation that I've just driven uh, is developed and designed to replicate uh, what is currently acknowledged as the fastest road going supercar and hypercar. So it'll be fascinating, won't it, <laughs> to see the difference between what is the current benchmark of something with number plates on a track and this thing. So, let's do it. Okay, so here we are in a development version of Valkyrie. I mean, I can't straight away, the, the first corner, the brakes are already a completely different ball game. Wow turn in I'm getting a lot more weight through the wheel as well right let's see what this is all about crikey the revs as well are incredible so first turn wow it's a complete just the load through the car is immediately identifiable we are approaching Eau Rouge here at a completely different level of pace oh that wow I mean just as a slight break and down one shift in this versus the other benchmark car and we're flinging our way up over which is just ridiculous yeah now all of a sudden what's interesting is that this thing has the sound more akin to an F1 car as you heard earlier on only the benchmark car wasn't matching up to how this thing sounds this thing all of a sudden, the performance that you're hearing is translating to the circuit. What a utterly different ball game. I mean, this really does feel like I've just jumped into a Formula One car. It's absurd. And interestingly as well, it's easier to drive. I feel like I've got a much better flow. I can predict what the car is doing. Wow. Braking points as well make much more sense. You can really anchor on. Now the servo that I've got on this simulation car is obviously much closer to a formula car or a proper single seater. So I'm able to anchor on a lot harder in this. And you can actually bleed off on this simulator as you're anchoring on and that downforce is working its way off the car. Oh man, this makes so much more sense now. <laughs> 
Oh, if I have anything, I've braked a lot too early there. This is mad. So already I've made one complete lap. I'm just gonna do one more to try and convey to you what this thing is all about. Uh, don't forget, this performance is being applied through Michelin road tires. This thing is gonna be able to do this level of performance and drive on the road. So I believe at the minute, this will be based around a sort of Cup 2 platform. Crikey. I mean, even though it's a road tire, the load that's gonna be going through this thing, we don't have official downforce figures yet, but you can tell just by the load and waiting through the steering, it is of a different echelon. Wow. What a machine. The revs as well, I don't forget at the minute we've been told Valkyrie's gonna have a thousand horsepower, but the downforce figures we haven't been told, but I cannot believe the step change it. It's like I've just jumped out of a, like a family four door saloon and into a Formula One car. It's a totally different gravy. Crikey. I tell you what, I'm not sure if it's part of the program, but any of the lucky customers who have got their hands on one of these will do well to jump in the sim beforehand because this thing is going to bend your diaphragm. What? <laughs> Crikey. So there you have it. So I think rather than me showing you around some more laps, we're going to step out, have a debrief, chat with Chris and find out ultimately what I've just experienced. Okay, so I've just stepped out of the sim. I'm here with Chris Goodwin. He's the test and development driver in charge of Valkyrie. As far as titles go, mate, that's, that's up there. <laughs> well, the project's up there. You yeah. know, it's, a, it's an amazing project to, to be in. I, I've worked in this industry on, on race cars and supercars for, for a while and on some amazing cars, but yeah. this is just something else. So what I just experienced in there, like these guys have just told me that I managed to get 20 seconds quicker than my previous lap time in the benchmark car. I mean, I'm no pro, I've been in there for a few laps. A completely different ball game. Utterly yeah, different Yeah, you know, it, it, it was at, apparently it was gonna be a different ball game from yeah. the word go. My first exposure to the project was in this building, having a, a discussion with Adrian Newey, who showed me some CAD drawings of some, some of the hardware, some of the components, mm -hmm. the wishbones and uprights. And, yeah. You know, it was amazing. You know, it was just something completely different to anything I'd seen on the road car before. Not a carryover part, not an evolution of something, not similar to anything. Um, uh, just intricate engineering. You know, it was just absolutely, you know, jaw droppingly. Uh, different, yeah. exciting, ambitious, you know. So um, quite interesting um, sales point, just to see, see all of that. Um, I've joined the project full of expectation and the work we've been doing here in the simulator for the past year has uh, lived up to that expectation. The degree of detail, um, the, the high energy, um, just the, the, the level of work that's being done here explains why the team does so well in Formula One. Yeah. It explains what they're great at in Formula One, which is, you know, the, their cars go around the corners quicker than other people's, right? Yeah. You know, they, it's a long, yeah. uh, it's an open discussion point about the different power trains that they've had in their history. You know, the handling and, and, and cornering performance that, be, that is produced from this team is second to none. Um, and that's exactly what you've experienced in the simulator. We've taken a model that represents the best in the world at the moment. What is available on the market? Um, lap time-wise, we know they're published. We know what lap times yeah. different, you know, benchmark cars are doing. Uh, we've modelled all of that. You've driven that, and then we've shown you the, the step. Well, this is absolutely bonkers. I mean, it really is. I mean, those benchmark cars. I'm sure you guys can think of them. Imagine them as a sort of amalgamation yeah. of all of the current fastest stuff. And then I wasn't joking when I said that really did feel, it felt like I got out of a road, conventional road car into a formula car. Mm -hmm. It was apps, just ridiculous. And this thing is going to wear number plates. This is before the track pack version and yeah. the AMR Pro, which is absurd. The, um, 
Very important point though yeah. is that the performance is great. The performance yeah. is the headline number, the big discussion point, uh, and yes, absolutely, the car looks amazing. The performance matches it, but. Watching you do that, uh -huh. the ease with which you did that, yeah. is, is the most important thing for me. Yes. The cars have to be driven by real people. Uh -huh. You know, there are 150 real people that have bought this car. They will drive it. Maybe some will drive it on the racetrack uh -huh. briefly. Maybe some regularly. But most of the people will drive these cars on the public streets, on the autobahns, on mountain roads, on the coolest roads around the world. Yeah. Yeah. The cars are going all over the world every climate, every road surface. And that's the job, that's the, that's the good bit, yeah. is making a car do that performance but in a way that everyone can enjoy, whether they're flat out, not flat out, cruising, yeah. in a city, uh, you know, driving up and out. Demanding so much out of a street tire. Yeah. Um, it was initially a, quite a concern uh -huh. to me, but actually the science behind it is is quite interesting and the light weight of this car yeah. opens up a world of possibilities from actually not massively different tyres to those that you might see on other supercars. Yeah. So we're working well in a partnership with Michelin mm -hmm. and we've got uh, experts in tyre development here working in the Red Bull organisation, modelling the tyre, sending the information backwards and forwards to, to, to Michelin. But the tyre um, we're able to, to, to use is is able to be in every wet, all weather, every yes. condition tire, um, but the light weight of the of, of the car um, reduces the loading, uh -huh. the, the way the aero active aero works um, and, and and morphs with with yeah. speed. You know, um, manages the load on those tires to to a degree. But yeah, they they, they are genuine, normal, pretty durable, everyday That's tire. Fun. I say everyday tire. It's yeah. one of Michelin's finest products. Sure. But um, yeah, uh, it, it's important to take that on board when you're driving around in that situation, yeah, going around Eau Rouge or Pool at the speed yeah. you're driving. Wow. Well, it's been an honour to be here. I know you guys have opened the doors to that yeah. facility every day of the week. Uh, I can't stress to you, I want to say a massive thank you to Aston, Red Bull, Michelin for getting me through those doors. It only gets better. Very good. Cool. Good to see you, mate. Take care. Cheers. I would say that is classed as an above average Thursday. <laughs> Even the simulators made this thing feel slow. Just the honour of being able to step inside that simulator. I cannot tell you how many strings were pulled in order to get us in there today. Uh, but the method of developing cars uh, in terms of Formula One has been translated into developing the Valkyrie and I think Aston have learned so much by partnering up with Red Bull Racing. I mean that facility we were in there is exactly the same place where they develop their Formula One cars. You've seen by that ridiculous trophy cabinet uh, how successful that formula is. Uh, and to be able to offer you guys an insight and a slice of just what that experience is like is just beyond me. Um, so yeah, massive thank you to everyone involved really. And I'm still getting over that. It's not so much of a step change in performance. It is of a completely different echelon. And I can only assume that what I experienced today is going to translate into the real world. That is the simulator that they develop Formula One components on, and they seem to be pretty good at that. So one can only assume that the real car will translate the performance as suggested, which blows my mind. On that tone, don't forget, that car is also a naturally aspirated V12, which in a day and age of everything going electric and heavily turbocharged, it revs to like 11,000. So not only is it gonna have incredible performance, but the exotica that that thing will ooze is just gonna be incredible. Now, as I mentioned, that is part two of the Valkyrie series. We've got loads more stuff lined up. Uh, lots of it currently is under embargo, and just by the nature of the beast, I'm not allowed to share too much of it with you. But rest assured, uh, well, I'm basically doing my best to bring you the most exclusive stuff I can with what I believe to be most significant car of the decade, almost. All of these elements will unfold, and I shall share with you guys soon, including the first drive, and that's gonna be monumental. We're gonna be bringing you the very first drive of the Valkyrie, so stay tuned for that. Anyway, um, comments below, let me
let me know what else you would like to see as part of the Valkyrie series. It's endless, we've got some cool stuff lined up, but often off the back of your guys' feedback, we always come up with some new stuff, so please let me know. As always, thanks for watching, I'll just see you next time. Ciao!